Good morning and welcome everyone. First, welcome to our inaugural Inclusive Leadership Summit. We are so grateful to have you all here with us today. To get us kicked off today, we are gonna start with our very first session of Career Insider Tips. We have Jamie Johnson, Career Advisor and Coach with the University of Phoenix, who's gonna share some resume tips on how to help get you noticed. During this session, uh, you'll be guided through understanding the purpose of a resume, tailoring your resume to the job, and creating a strong opening. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Jamie now, and we'll get started. Jamie? Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Hi, uh, my name is Jamie Johnson. I'm one of the career advisors for the University of Phoenix. Thank you so much for being here so bright and early. Um, just to give you a little bit of background from where I'm coming from, I am a nationally certified counselor through NBCC, National Board of Certified Counselors, and a certified career counselor through the National Career Development Association. I've been in the field for hard to say this a little over 30 years, and I'm really excited here to share with you something that's very important and I would say near and dear to me, you know, how do you get your resume noticed? What is happening for you personally? as we go through the process. So if we can go ahead and go to the next slide, Casey, that would be wonderful. Yep, Jamie, and just one more thing, your camera's not on, so will you please turn that on? Yes, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Hold on just one second. Why? Where did it go? Interesting, I don't know where the camera disappeared. doesn't show I even have access to it. Hmm. I'm unmuted, but it doesn't show the camera. I apologize. Okay, no worries. Just go ahead. Okay. All right, so um, let's go on over to the next uh, slide. Um, you know, today we're going, and you know what? I can't even see the slide. Oh, there you are. There you are. So I can see you. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, Today, I'm, what happens when you get to be the first one, right? We get to share together and explore as we go through the process. So today we're going to talk about number one. We'll go ahead and flip through. Um, identify why, if your resume isn't getting noticed, what, what do we need to do? What's behind it? Uh, number two, um, how we can tailor it to the job. We can go ahead and keep flipping, uh, Casey. Um, one of the things I've learned, I've had people share with me, Jamie, I have been uh, sending out 100 resumes. I go into Indeed, I pop out the resumes, and boom, nothing happens. I don't get any responses. What's behind it? That's what we're going to talk about today. What's going on behind the scenes? And, of course, uh, evaluate your approach. What's, how, what can you do that you can take power responsibility? You are the CEO of me. You can take uh, charge of this and make this a possibility. And, of course, number four, You know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna prove that you can do it, and we're gonna evaluate what we need to do. So we're gonna go through this whole process together. So let's talk about um, why do you think your resume is not getting noticed? And you're welcome to put thoughts in the box, what you think behind it. I'm happy to, you know, we'll answer questions later. Uh, one of the things we want to talk about. I want this to be, you know, something we can really talk heart to heart on this because it really is a heart to heart subject this is personal this is about your relationship with the job search and how the employer who you want to meet their needs gets to see who you are and what you have to offer so um you know think about why maybe your resume isn't getting noticed i see some people saying gaps incorrect vocab all these are great comments um let's go forward with the, the next uh so, you know, if we look at the definition of what a resume is, um, it's, you know, one definition is it's a professional advertisement targeted toward your future boss with the goal of landing an interview for that job that you can succeed in. And I really believe it is a, a marketing tool. It's not about your history. It's not about showing what you've done and just putting it out there. It's literally taking the pieces of information as it relates to the position and evaluating that approach. What does it take to get there? We can go on to the next slide. So um, if any of you have ever guessed, I um, jumped ahead of myself, but um, 
if you thought off the top of your head how often people see your resume and how many people apply, um, you know, when they go in and look at those jobs, how many people are applying, you know, on the average, we know at least one corporate listing gets over 250, and I've seen more. If you go on LinkedIn, certain places, you can see, right, how many listings or opportunities are out there, how many people are applying, and that makes it challenging, right? I mean, think about it. Um, what does it take to get noticed? What is this going to mean for you to be able to um, be the one that they pick, right? So let's go on forward. So how do we how do we do this? What what are the stages to get there? We can go on to the next ones. So let's talk about the three main stages that it takes. Number one, of course, the computer is going to make the decision first, right? There's this HR software called ATS or Application Tracking System. Um, it's going to take your uh, document and it's going to look and see, do you have the keywords I'm looking for? I have this description. How, how closely do you match? What's the percentage, right? All right, let's go to the next stage. We'll talk more about this in depth. There's a lot to this. Number two, then the HR staffing looks at it, right? The recruiters go through after you've been matched. Let's say you go through and you you say, you know, I'm pretty close. I'm a 90%. Is that going to make it? What if somebody has 99% match? How will you go against the 99%, right? These are key things. And then third, what's our third step? We click on the third step in this process, of course, is the manager, right? And what is the manager looking for? How are you going to get your foot in the door? What's going to attract them? How are you demonstrating to them you're qualified for the position? You know, so, you know, it takes six seconds on an average for somebody to look through a resume. If you think the system's calculating you, the, the recruiters are calculating you, and now the manager, that's, you're really, you're really in the, the uh, competition to make sure you're noticed. And that's what we're going to focus on today. We can go on to the next one, Casey. So, so far what we know, of course, right, is that there's lots of applicants. You've got to think about strategy, right? Um, number two. Um, your resume is going to be reviewed between humans and computers. What does that mean? How are you going to get to them? How do we get through the doors? I always say sometimes we have to go through the windows, right? What does that window look like? And of course, if your resume is going to be reviewed through all this, you know, and you're going to be scanned quickly, what are we going to do to make sure that it is scannable? Because it's got to be scannable and readable if they're going to catch it. So we can go on to the next. So Remember I was telling you about being the CEO of me? So I want you to think about this in two ways. I know this is going to sound funny. Sometimes I call it like job dating. What is important to your future boss? What is it that you need to think about when you look out there at this position that's going to be important or relevant to catch them, right? Because um, we want to know what's important to them. Um, yes, it's important for you. We want it to be win-win, but we've got to know to speak their language. So let's go forward in the uh, next slide and talk about what employers want from you. What does that mean? Because every employer is different. I remember I was helping somebody with a resume recently. Two hospitals in the same city, two different jobs, but the same job. Two different titles, two different keywords. We had to write two separate resumes and target each one for that person to have an option and an you know, ability to get into the door. So what employers want. So let's uh, let's talk about the first point here. First, we know there's been study. You know, we want to we want to think about the job description. Have you ever sat down and looked at the actual job description? I literally will get a cup of coffee, water when I'm sitting down with somebody and we're going to we're going to tear this apart. What's behind this? Let, let's look at it. What are the words that are going? Let's go to the next point. And of course, um, as we look at it, you know, I'm looking to say how many years experience, what are the qualifications, what are the key responsibilities, what are those key words, because we're going to utilize that when we write the resume. And of course, if we go to point three, you know, we're then going to look at that experience. We're not going to just put out what we have. We're going to make sure that what we describe, because sometimes we may use a particular skill set, but the way it's described in that job may sound different, but it's the very same skill. 
are we using their uh, language? I had a, a client I was working with once. He would not change his resume. He was getting no response. And I would say, look, if you use their keywords, if you target, if you break down that job description and you apply it to the job, you're going to get an interview. And of course, the purpose of a resume is to get your foot in the door, to get the interview. And so sure enough, he finally listened to me, sat down and broke it down, wrote it together, targeted the job. And he got a call from the hiring manager. And um, the hiring manager told him, you have exactly the qualifications we're seeking. And he called me up immediately because he was called in for the interview. He said, OK, I'm a believer. I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> I need to target. It, it's hard sometimes. It's not easy to write these documents, but it's worthwhile. You deserve it. It's part of the process. You're also exploring to see if this is for you. This is not just about the employer, but we need to learn what the employer seeks because that way we can see if this is also the right opportunity for us, right? All right, so let's go to the next slide. So let's talk about an example here, right? So this is an example of a job description. And you can see in the slide, we've highlighted keywords. So these are some of the keywords in the job description that we want to think about. And we want to make sure we include in our documents. So when we, uh, when you go to the next click, Casey, it should show, hopefully, yeah, it'll show you. So now here's an example of a resume and how we have incorporated the keywords. You see, I'm not just listing what I've done or what the client's done. I'm literally taking what they done, they have completed, conquered, <laughs> uh, accomplished, whatever word you want to use. Um, and we've made it tailored to that employer, to that job, so that they can see that this person does have a similar background, experience, skill. It's also going to reach to our computer friend, the ATS, um, and it's going to help us be able to get ourselves into the next level, right? Let's go on to the next page. Um, so the second phase, so we've looked at keywords, is people. I always think of the song Barbara Streisand uh, sung many years ago, People Needing People, because it is all about people. It is about relationships. And our relationship is so important. Um, and that is connected to building relationships. And how do we do that? How do we find out the inside scoop about a job? I would love to encourage all of you, if you haven't tried this yet, or if you've already in the process, I, I you know, congratulate you. This is very important. Getting that information behind the scenes. What is it like? How you know? Conduct an informational interview, because learning the inside of how the organization works, how the people. I mean, I will tell you, every job I think I've ever had has had some kind of connection. I've done it. I actually did an informational interview with someone here at the University of Phoenix uh, um, when I was doing my job search. Every position I've had, I've had some kind of personal connection, and by it, at least talking to three people, this is going to open up a door for you to find out, is this the role for me? When we were talking about what's the culture? You know, as we talked this week about the Leadership Summit, diversity, equity, inclusion, what is the culture of this organization? Are they in line with what's important and endeared to me? Are they going to represent what I believe in? You know, people can be good at a job. Um, they can like it. Uh, their um, personality, everything could fit in, but if their values are in alignment, it can cause all kinds of issues, and it, it will be just as much a problem as if it was some of the other factors involved, if you weren't skilled enough or the wasn't the right fit. Your values are just as important to consider. So um, it's very important to get that conversation going, build relationships. There's different ways to do it through LinkedIn, through your alumni, whether you're an alum of the University of Phoenix or a student, we have alum. If you looked on LinkedIn, we have almost 800,000 alum just in LinkedIn alone. We have the Phoenix Link Network. Um, talking to people can make such a huge difference, your friends, your family. Um, there's so many factors involved, but you want to do an informational interview. You want to research and find out. Let's go to the next page, um, uh, next link. So um, just to summarize what I said, talk to three people. Uh, this will give you the deeper insight into what you want, of course. Um, and then, of course, when we go to the third point, um, it'll help you be able to write that stronger resume because now you know that this is important to them. Um, you found out from so-and-so what well, says that they really want this, but this is what they're seeking. This happened to me, actually. I was applying for a job um, at a small uh, college in Southern California. I lived in California at the time. 
um, my friend who I'd worked with at another institution out there uh, was the hiring manager. And he said, Jamie, don't put your university experience first, put your HR experience first. I said, why? This is a small liberal arts college. Why would I want to put my recruit? Because the dean of students wants to see you've had HR experience first. Okay. That insight gave me the insight I needed that when I met the dean and I talked first, because we, we had the interview at that time with every person individually, I met the dean personally. Sure enough, what did she bring up? My HR experience. Very important. So just encourage you. It's, these things can be very valuable. Um, all right, so we can go to the next point. And we'll answer any questions, of course, at the end to make sure. These are just examples of some of the questions you can ask. This is You're going to be receiving all this material. So um, we want to make sure just to think about this as you go through. I remember when I was figuring out what I wanted to do, um, I found that the people I chose to go meet. In fact, I have a funny story about informational interviewing. I met a my first person in the field of counseling and career development through a friend of mine who was working part-time at Caltech at the time. And her friend was seeing a counselor in the career center. And I asked my friend if she could contact her friend to see if I could talk to this counselor. We got together and I started asking some of these very questions. Those questions opened up doors for me to go on to where I had so many people to reach out. I figured out my graduate program. I found my mentor, professor, and I was able to get into the program within uh, the next few months and get ready and prepare for what I wanted to do. So uh, these questions are very powerful because we're trying to find out, you know, what what, how do you, do you get started? This is about them, not about you, because this will answer questions for you. If you ask them, you know, uh, where could I get training? How did you get started? What are some of the leaders? This will give you the insight. And of course, we were talking about the culture. What is the culture like? Um, you can look at a company, you can read about it, but the people who work there can tell you the true story about what's going on. All right. So, what about the next step? What else can we do? So we talked a little bit about, you know, keywords. We talked about talking to people. What else does our resume need to be a good fit, right? Those concrete examples and statistics, and they're so important because I've seen people write down manage people <laughs> for their statement. It's like, that's awesome. That's great. But what did you manage? Who did you manage? How many people did you manage? How can you share this to help target who the person, the employer, the job, the opportunity is. So let's talk about what this looks like. We can go to the next slide. What does that mean? This is where you get to talk about yourself. What are your success stories? Ask yourself these questions. How is my performance measured, right? And of course, you know, how do you measure that? Well, what are the three most important aspects of your job? And how have you excelled? I don't know about you, but it's easy for all of us to get so busy that we forget. And this includes if you're a student. You have to think about all aspects. If you volunteer somewhere, um, if you are involved in any clubs or activities, um, all of those things count. Don't forget, you know, everybody is of value here. What about the metrics? How can you prove to them that you are a top performer, right? What did you do to contribute to your team? What about some awards? Um, there's some great programs here at the University of Phoenix people belong to. Um, what about uh, anything you've done specifically above and beyond? All these things count. Think about your, take the time to write out your stories. Keep track of this. Um, every job, even when you start a new job, start keeping your own career journal and keep track of what you do because these things count. I. I can't tell you, and maybe some of you have been there too. I forgot about some things I had done until I looked back at one of my um, uh, past resumes. I had forgotten that I had been involved in something, that I had developed this whole peer program because it had been five years. I had forgotten about it. I wasn't doing that type of work at the time, but it counted for other things. So it's important, remember, to think that everything you do, even if you're involved in your church, synagogue, mosque, uh, local community center, I don't care where you are, all these things can be important. Um, so look at your success stories. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So then the next step we want to do, of course, is turn these into accomplishments. What does that mean? Well, numbers, <laughs> I'm, I'm a counselor first. I'll tell you, numbers have never been my friend, but they're truth. They show truth. 
they describe what you've done. Let's go to the next point. Step two, share the details. It's easy, believe me, to not think about it. I, saw, you know, I was sharing with you, you know, manage people, <laughs> manage staff. I've seen that in a resume, and that's all they wrote. Um, what's the details? How many staff did you manage, right? What were the specifics of what you managed and why? What was the result? Go to step three. And of course, um, you know, what matters? What is the end result for them? You know, how are you proving what you've done as it relates? Because if they can see you in the role, remember, these people hopefully have some kind of connection through your networking. Um, but if they don't and they're looking at your documents, what are they going to see that's going to prove to them to want to bring you in, to want to talk to you further about what you've accomplished, right? So let's go to the next page. Um, so just talk a little bit about an example, right? So uh, before, right, you were, and remember I was telling you about some of these general statements. I see these all the time. I've done it myself. I've had to rewrite my own documents. Provided customer service serving food and beverages in a busy, fast-paced environment. Afterwards, served 80 customers daily in a 130-plus seat restaurant averaging 18% tip. Think about the numbers here in the description. What a difference that makes. Look how that, uh, you know, I had a, a, a client I was working with who worked at McDonald's, and I looked at her resume, and I said, I would never know you worked for McDonald's, by the way. You wrote your management skills and what you accomplished. It, because she told the truth. She did not. This was not statements that were made up or exaggerated. This was exactly what she did, but she used this language. That's the power of these languages, that you, the, the, the words that you can use. Uh, participate in quarterly meetings. See the difference, not just meetings. What did you learn? What was the value from those meetings? And of course, the next point. Uh, translate portions of the website into Spanish. That's great, but what was the purpose? Well, look, it actually captured the market that had been ignored by the competitors. Look at the power in that. You may take it for granted and think some things that you do aren't of value, but it's just as important to explain why, what's behind it. Who, what, when, where, why? What was the result? You know, what did you accomplish? Um, think about those things. Take the time. You're worth it. So building these bullet statements. For some of you, this may be something you're already familiar with, but it's always... Um, I just want to make sure that everybody in our audience gets a chance to work through this um, because all your questions are important to me and to all of us. We want to make sure as much as we can in this time to cover what, what counts because I, I do see a lot of resumes and this is one of my battles trying to share the importance of this. It really takes time to get the result that you want. Uh, so building your statements. Now, paragraph versus bullets. Remember we were talking about the 10 seconds or less, and the average is six seconds. How many people take the time to read paragraphs these days? How many people sit down and read articles or documents in full depth, right? I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'll skip through even articles I get because I'm in a hurry. Um, think about how our social media is designed. So if we start writing out these amazing, beautiful paragraphs, which I've seen, if you have 10 seconds or less, what employer is going to catch what you need them to see in that paragraph? So we're going to build into bullet statements. Action verb, a description of what you did, and the outcome or purpose. Because remember, it's we're trying to reach our audience. We're trying to get to them to see this quickly, right? And of course, we want to avoid personal pronouns because we're doing um, quick language, right? If we start doing, I did this, we did this. But if we use um, the action verbs, which we'll share momentarily, you'll see the power and the ability to quickly read through what we're doing. Also, there are a couple of comments I see, um, which I recognize, and I appreciate what you're saying. Remove passive phrases like responsible for and duties include. We've all done it. It's a common phrase you'll see in a resume. You'll even see it in some of the templates. But I encourage you to stay away from passive. You're going to go present, action. Uh, a body in motion stays in motion. A body at rest stays in rest. Remember, Nike used a, a Newtonian 
uh, physics law. And it's the truth. We want action. We want movement. All right, let's go on to the next one. So here's an example, right? So coached. 35 teachers on implementing thinking maps into curriculum to develop students' problem-solving and decision-making skills. See the action that's going on? Uh, manage the caseload of 60-plus clients diagnosed with a series of mental illness to implement behavioral health services that support wellness. Developed and trained. Look at that. That's that action again. We're in movement. 20 district managers on effective negotiation and buying strategies that cut expenses by an average of 15% across 75 stores. Now, that's a statement. That's power. That's action. That's movement. That's what we're seeking in our documents. Because remember, we don't have much time. We want to get our foot in the door. Because the most important thing is we want the employer, the recruiter, the manager, we want them to see us. So we've got to get our foot in the door. We can't let our document lag. We can't let it be at rest. We're going forward. OK, we can go to the next slide. So you know. Um, what does that mean? You know, we're almost done talking about this aspect of it. Um, what do we need to do personally for ourselves to adapt, to change? You know, I will share with this um, experience I've had since COVID. In the last two years, there's two things that I have personally seen, and I've talked with a lot of my colleagues about this. And, and then most recently, an article in the Muse confirmed what what I, we'd all been thinking. We've noticed that two things that happen in the job search. The people who are landing the jobs, number one, have a very targeted resume. And number two, most importantly, they have a relationship, a connection. And what I mean by that is they just don't know the person. The people in the hiring process actually know how this person works. They have a connection through some way, whether it's through a professional association, a coworker, a friend, a family, some kind of some kind of circumstance connection has helped create, and especially at jobs that tend to be in the in the levels where not entry level so much. Entry level, you can find more people who can step in without having the same background experience or connection. But definitely as you move up into the industry and the role in your position, people want to know people. And it, in COVID, I think because of what we've been through, it's really created the importance of all of us making that connection. That's what I was talking to you about, informational interviewing, um, networking, and not building relationships just for the job or the job search. We're talking about a lifetime. Um, I can think back on every job I've ever had the opportunity to be a part of in my lifetime. And I am so grateful because it was through connections in every aspect. I, there's not one job I didn't have some kind of connection or opportunity or career move. And that makes the difference, you know. So we need to ask ourselves these questions. What are we doing to take care of ourselves in these times? How are we making ourselves the most competitive, the most visible, you know. <laughs> I always think of the movie The Princess Diaries in the beginning of the movie. Have you ever seen that? Um, when Mia, uh, who's playing by Anne Hathaway, one of my favorite movies, and she's invisible. <laughs> and I think about that sometimes with the job search, you know. Um, we can be invisible. Our resumes, our documents, who we are online, and that's a whole nother. We want our LinkedIn, of course, to be visible and compatible with our job search process, with our resumes, CVs, whatever documents we're using. But think about what do we need to change? Is it working for us? What can we do? Um, because, you know, uh, we can go on to the next slide. The good news is it's not too late. No matter where you and if you haven't written a resume in a long time, um, if you haven't been in the job search for a while, it's okay. Now's the time. It's never too late. Now's the time. You know, so we've talked about, you know, why people may not be getting the responses they need. Um, you know, we're, of course, uh, you know, as I've shared with you, we aren't networking. That relationship is so important. You're trying to build that relationship. Um, it's so important to directly reach out, if you can, to hiring managers. I mean, I think um, I don't have I haven't always known the hiring manager, but I've been connected in some way. 
um, through people I know. Uh, build relationships. In fact, uh, here's a really great example. I had a, a student I was working with, and um, she was just graduating. She was just finishing up her degree. She was working as an intern uh, in a um, accounting office in a local college university. Her internship was ending. She was graduating. Her boss knew about another position at another local uh, college. She recommended. Now, this student had just reached out to me to do work on her resume. We just started. <laughs> when I ended up finally connecting with her, she said, Jamie, I didn't even have time to make any of the changes on my resume because um, my boss recommended me to this other employer. The hiring manager was interested in me through the recruiter. The recruiter called me. I interviewed with the recruiter. Then they brought me in for interview. The person was hired without ever getting a chance to change her resume. Sometimes resumes are trumped by relationships. And I say that because it's so important to remember that relationships drive everything we do. And it can make or break or take <laughs> you to that next level. So just remember, you know, relationships are important. Take care of yourself. Reach out. Develop that network. Number two, um, don't avoid the spay and, and pray. You know, I, how many people, like we were talking about, I've had so many people, I put out 100 resumes and indeed today, um, or wherever they're applying, I feel so good. I've done my part. Now I'll wait. <laughs> you know, you have to recognize uh, it's relationships. You're going to laugh. It's like job dating. You are targeting your audience. If you know your audience loves uh, Jamocha Almond Fudge and you're giving them strawberry, are you meeting your audience? <laughs> it's very important to recognize the importance of understanding um, the importance of targeting and being selective. You know, don't just think about your approach. Are you targeting or are you, I'll take anybody. I always call it the generic dating. Who's open? I'll take it. <laughs> People are like, States. They want people that they like, that they want to bring in that are similar on the same mission, the values, the skill sets, etc. We go to the next part. And of course, are you competitive enough? You know, when you look at your resume, you know, we we're talking about the documents, you know, that percentage, you know, how the ATS goes through. Have you ever tried jobscan.com, for example? You can literally take the job description and your job and put it through and see how you come up. I think also I know it, LinkedIn can show you how well you, um, uh, you know, your percentage is coming up. We were talking about that earlier. Um, is your resume competitive enough and are you personally competitive enough? Uh, if you are competitive enough, but you haven't used the language, that's something you can work on and change. But if what if you need skill training or gaps that need to be developed? There are ways to help build those gaps. If you're looking at a job, say, for example, that requires five years experience, sometimes that can work. I'm, I always say it depends. But if you meet other areas, we know like in the government listings, you see it. So many years of education, so many years of experience. They will juggle or they will evaluate based on that. But there are some areas where this is where you want to go. What do you need to get there? Um, volunteer, internship, uh, take coursework, freelance. Think about your skill set and what you need to do to adjust the target. Um, here's a really great example. There's a um, recent student I've been working with and some of our other team members had worked with. She didn't have any experience and she uh, wanted to get into the healthcare field, but she also couldn't work full time because of her children. So uh, she was recommended to start out volunteering at the hospital and she started out in the gift shop. That is experience turned out into a part-time paid job just recently. She started last fall. They loved her so much. She put her whole heart in that opportunity. She went above and beyond. Um, she got to know everybody. She was willing to dive in and help with whatever way she could. And that gap that she had with no experience suddenly turned into offering her a part-time job, which is exactly what she was seeking. So eventually she will move into a full-time role once her children get in the next stage. So it's just, I want to encourage you, if you feel like you're behind or you don't have what you need, it's okay. There are ways to get there. 
um, volunteering, interning, freelancing, getting involved in activities. Don't forget your other activities are just as important. There was a lady, she was uh, uh, those who are parents and stay at home and they stay home with their children for a while. There are ways you can develop other skills. One lady was home for 10 years and she got involved with the PTA. And that leadership that she developed through that role helped her get into another role in a nonprofit. So there are ways to do this and break it down. So I want to encourage you, don't, don't be afraid. <laughs> Think about um, going through the windows if you don't have the doors. Um, fill the gaps. Uh, think about your target. You want to know who you're focusing on. And most importantly, build those relationships. Um, let's go on to the next slide. So, of course, always seek support. You know, here for those of you who are alumni or students at the University of Phoenix, um, we have Phoenix Link um, and we have our own resume career guide. I understand all of you are receiving our resume career guide, if I understand correctly. And um, if you are a student here, uh, you can have your resume reviewed or an alum, either one. It's career for life. Please remember, we're here to help you. Uh, we can look at your resume, help you with any aspects of the career exploration, job search, whether it's an internship, like we helped us, uh, somebody get a volunteer position and now she's been hired, or you're going to graduate school, or you need help with applications, whatever it is, you can access through phoenix-csm.simplicity.com, and it's through our website, you'll see a link to access it. Um, for those of you who uh, may not be students, there is the National Career Development Association that actually does offer uh, career counselors who are certified and trained in different areas. You can access through ncda.org and um, you can definitely reach through them. If you're not a student um, or an alum of the University of Phoenix, um, uh, but take advantage while you're here of talking to people and meeting people. Look at your network. Talk to people you know who know you um, and be sure to reach out because um, Remember this, sometimes we don't know things because we don't know. If we don't know, how do we find out? It's our network, it's our inner circle, it's our connections. How many times have you had family or friends help you see something because it wasn't there? Think of this process as you are not alone. It can feel that way sometimes with, the, um, with COVID and what's happened. But you are not alone, and we're here to help and um, take advantage of this summit to meet people, to talk to people, to connect, and to begin that process to build your circle.